Whoever wrote Psalm 29 had obviously experienced something very beautiful and very powerful. He experienced something that he calls the voice of the Lord. And this voice of the Lord first appears, it seems, out over the waters. I'm assuming over the waters of the Mediterranean. From there, the voice of the Lord, the Lord then moves. And we next hear of it over in Lebanon, the country in the north of Israel, famous for its mighty cedar trees. But this voice of the Lord, whatever it is, is so powerful that it makes the mighty cedars of Lebanon twist and whirl and break. From there, this voice of the Lord swings south and is now seen over Mount Syria, a mountain on the border between Lebanon and Israel. Then suddenly it swings to the east, and we hear it over a stream. I'm imagining the upper Jordan River, which it makes to skip and swirl, like it says, a jumping cap. From there, the voice of the Lord moves off into the wilderness of Kadesh, which, the psalmist says, it makes to shake. What is this thing that he's describing? What is this thing that he calls voice of the Lord? It seems fairly obvious that what it is is, in fact, a mighty, powerful thunderstorm. For what else could do all of those things? The kind of thunderstorm that we've all seen from time to time that is wildly beautiful, and yet at the same time, terrible. Of course, a storm like that is usually more beautiful when you see it from a distance and more terrible you're in the middle of it. But you see, the psalmist is watching this storm progress from a distance, from the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, and from there he and all the people can simply observe this and cry to glory. What is the point of calling this powerful, beautiful, terrifying storm the voice of the Lord? I think what the psalmist is trying to say that is that in the experience of something so beautiful and so powerful and so terrible, he is able to have an experience of the presence of God. It reminds me of another story I once heard. In 1885, a Swedish poet by the name of Carl Gustav Oberg, was out with his friends. They had gone to church service and were making their way home, when all of a sudden they were caught by a sudden unexpected storm. And the winds were so powerful that they, they whipped up the wheat fields that they were passing through so that they danced around like men. And the thunder boomed so loudly that it was shaking their very bones. And then the rains fell. They fell to nourish the earth. And finally the rain passed over, the sky cleared, and a beautiful rainbow filled the sky. After that powerful experience, Carl Gustav Bober continued on his way home. He went into his house and into his study where he opened the window. His window looked out onto the bay of Munsteras, which after the calm of the storm was as still as glass. And as he sat there in his study, he heard the, the song of the thrush from the other side of the bay and the soft tolling of a bell from the church. And Carl Gustav Bogart took out his pen, his paper, and he wrote down the words that have since been translated thus. O oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe this way. Now you all know how it goes from there. 
Brendan and Mike and I are standing. And we will sing together the words that Carl Gustav Holberg wrote over a hundred years ago. Are you doing? It's a double rainbow all the way. Whoa, that's so intense. Whoa, man. Whoa. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. Whoa. Oh, wow. Woo! Yeah! And then the video goes on there for three and a half minutes of pretty much the same stuff. Now, Vasquez insists that when he made that video, he was not under the influence of any strange substances. Some people have expressed doubt at that, but I am willing to give the guy the benefit of it. Because I think what he experienced there, on that little piece of land, is not really that uncommon. Even if his reaction was a little bit over the top, admittedly. He experienced something beautiful, something powerfully beautiful. It was bright and it was vivid and it kind of swept him away. When we encounter beauty, if we give ourselves over to it, if we just abandon ourselves into the enjoyment of that beauty, we can have some really extraordinary experiences. Now, if you listen to this whole video, and I don't necessarily suggest that you do so, but if you listen to the whole thing, you will find that that's getting these two phrases over and over and over and over again. He keeps saying, oh my God, and what does it mean? And I think these two phrases, when you look at them from the right angle anyways, are really markers of a spiritual experience. That, that sudden, uh, surprising encounter with God in something beautiful really does happen. And any sort of powerful spiritual experience like that will open you up to deeper and deeper questioning. It is a legitimate way to experience God through the experience of something beautiful. The Christian practice we're looking at today is the practice of it. When Vasquez saw that rainbow, it reminded him of a story that we all know. It reminded him of the story of Noah and the ark. And think of how that story is told. 
Noah and his family come out of the ark, where have they been in that ark? They have been shut in, in the darkness, in the filth, and in the smell, according to Genesis, for weeks and weeks and weeks. Can you imagine how you would feel when you open that door? And the first sight you see is not just the light, but this beautiful rainbow in the sky. Is it any wonder that simply by looking at that beautiful sight after all they've been through, that Noah and his family experienced something divine? They read a message in the beauty of the rainbow. God spoke to them through the beauty. God can speak to us through beauty. So that's what we're concentrating on here today. As you have seen and heard, we have surrounded ourselves with beautiful things, all produced by the people of this congregation in various ways. We have this wonderful art gallery up here this morning, and I, I do hope you come and visit at the end. But all these things have been produced from this congregation. Beauty has long been an essential part of the life of the church. We worship in beautiful, beautiful buildings. We surround ourselves with beautiful artwork. We listen to beautiful music. We're doing that yet again today, just trying to crank it up a little bit more. Because the promise is that when we enjoy and abandon ourselves to beautiful things, we can have an experience of God. Now, I know that doesn't make any logical sense. I know that's not a reasonable or rational thing. I mean, Vasquez's reaction to that rainbow was anything but rational, but the reaction is real. So I invite you to open yourselves to simply experience the beauty in all its various forms. We're also going to hear in a few minutes from a couple of people in our congregation who have experienced God in and through the creation of beautiful things. If you open yourselves up to the possibility. God makes himself present through all sorts of things. Let's sing together. 